Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. My neighbors here, they brought their 2000 Ram 3500 camper conversion van over. They're gonna take it on a long trip and they're having a problem with starting it after a hot soak. Interesting. This thing is absolutely mint. Road Trek 190, it's popular. <laughs> But, um, I mean, this, this is so cool. Only 90,000 miles on it. Everything is just gorgeous. Looking at some live data here. Uh, well, before we get into that, what would you guys do in this case? So, the symptoms are, they said cold start is fine. They drive it for whatever into town half an hour leave it like at a store parking lot come back you said anywhere from five minutes later to an hour later it cranks it does not want to start it pushes the gas it fires up but it doesn't want to stay running he said for the first five minutes of driving after a hot start you have to be really careful at a traffic light or a stop sign the van will stall out <laughs> so um, he just has to like keep one foot on the brake, the other one on the gas a little bit to keep it alive. And after five minutes of driving, it's back to normal. I just took it for a test drive. It runs absolutely perfect. I mean, this thing just rolled off the showroom floor. I was looking at some live data while, you know, on the test drive. Our fuel trims are with it like zero percent. Oxygen sensor is doing great. TPS map sensor engine cool and temp everything is great so what could explain these symptoms it's screaming to me you know if it's a hard start when hot the intake manifold is filling up with fu uh, you know fuel fumes gasoline fumes and it's basically choking itself out after those clear up it's perfect. So what could cause the intake manifold to fill with gasoline fumes? It could be, for example, a leaky injector or a leaky fuel pressure regulator that if you let it sit in the, you know, there's pressure in the rail and it drips into the intake manifold, fills the whole thing up with fumes, and also the pressure in the rail drops, so that could boil, you'll definitely have a hard time starting it when it's hot. Uh, the other variable is the perch solenoid coming from the EVAP system. If that's stuck open, you know, you drive it around for a while, the gas in the tank is warmed up, there's pressure in the tank, and it needs to escape, it goes into the charcoal canister, and if that perch solenoid does not close when it's supposed to, when the truck's just sitting, the intake manifold may fill up with fumes. Okay, so a couple possibilities. What would you check first? Uh, my thought process is the customer said that it takes a while for this problem to clear up like almost five minutes of driving which is pretty crazy if it was a liquid fuel you know dripping like say an injector wasn't completely closing and just slightly leaking once it fires up that should clear right up I mean within a few seconds and the truck should run fine uh, fuel pressure regulator on this design, it's actually in the tank, so it's just one line going to the fuel rail. It's kind of like a returnless, early returnless system. So that's not even a variable. Uh, purge solenoid. Let's say the purge solenoid just mechanically sticks full open, and it sits in the parking lot, and the thing fills up with fumes. The charcoal canister is you know, saturated with, with fumes. Uh, that, I think, is more likely, because that would take a little while to clear up. You would need to purge the entire charcoal canister <clears throat> uh, before it actually, you know, clears up and runs fine at idle. So that would be my first check, just to see. You know, right now it says 100% purge duty cycle. Basically, shut the truck off, locate this purge solenoid, and see if we can just blow through it. With the truck off, it should be closed. If it's not closed, that's the problem. 
if it is closed, we'll you know we'll keep going, maybe do some field pressure checks. So it should be a fairly quick diagnosis. Uh, this thing, the engine lives you know right here, but luckily we don't have to remove the doghouse because the purge solenoid is right there. Look for the green cap. That's our purge line going into the engine, and the line from the tank is parallel to that. So I can disconnect it right by that green cap and try to just blow through the perch solenoid and see if, if it's stuck open. Hopefully it's just that, it'd be a simple fix. So let's shut the van off. Now I'm going to let it sit, so it's 11... 12 a.m. right now. Let's let it sit for 10 minutes. So at 11.20, we'll come back, read the live data, try to start it up, and if it's a hard start, it should be running pretty rich. The oxygen sensor should say, hey, we're way too rich. It's going to take fuel away until that charcoal canister cleans up. Uh, then we can unhook the purge solenoid and do that flow test when the vehicle is off. Actually, let's just speed up the process. Start the truck up. Okay, I unhooked the, did I unhook the wrong hose? I guess the one with the green cap actually goes to the fuel tank. Okay, well, let me disconnect the other hose. All right, so now the purge duty cycle is zero, and is there vacuum on this hose right here? No, there is not. That purge solenoid indeed is is working. Let's uh, try an actuation test. Purge solenoid. Engine must not be running. Okay. What about purge solenoid percent? We don't have that. So right now the purge solenoid is not okay you can see the purge duty cycle is ramping up that solenoid is actually working it's building vacuum at my finger now chick 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 Okay, so maybe we're barking up the wrong tree here. So I'm going to reconnect that. We have to recreate this complaint. So I'm going to let it sit for 10 minutes. We're going to pull up some live data, start it up, and see what happens. Okay, so while we're letting the motor home sit in hot soak, what's the next thought? It's not the purge solenoid. Verified that, took a couple minutes. Uh, that's conclusive. It's not going to be leaky injector. I'm sure of that because it doesn't match the symptoms. You know, if it was a fuel, you know, fumes problem in the intake manifold, that would clear right up and the, the truck would run fine. The owner says he has to feather the gas for like five minutes and then, then it's okay. Last thing I can think of is the idle air control motor. So it has you know traditional throttle cable, throttle body, and a separate idle air control motor. I bet that thing is just sticking closed, and when it's you know really hot, it doesn't want to do its thing. And then once the truck 
starts up and fresh air gets in there and cools it down a little bit, then it works fine. That's my uh, that's my guess. So we're gonna have to take this doghouse cover off, you know, inside the van, and then find the IEC. Um, we can look at the data pids, what the command is uh, for opening it. Maybe do a little tap. You know, if the van acts up, you tap it and it just you know the idle stabilizes. Then we're exactly on the right track. Uh, is it going to be no parts required? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just a little dirty and sticky. Because it works most of the time. He said the problem has been getting progressively worse over the last year. First it would happen once in a blue moon, then a couple times a week. Now it happens, he said, every time you do a hot soap. So, um, yeah, I think that's the next step. Okay, so doing a little research on this idle air control motor. It's four wires. So it's going to be a stepper motor design with four separate drivers. In the description and operation, it does say IC stepper motors mounted to the throttle body, regulates the amount of air bypassing the control of the throttle plate. So it's a pintle that moves in and out. It's like a little screw. So there are four circuits, two of the wires are for 12 volts and ground to supply electrical current to the motor windings to operate stepper motor in one direction. Other two are for 12 volts and ground to go in the opposite direction. Okay. So you can reverse the polarity in both windings. If only one wire is open, IC can only be moved one step. This locks the IC motor in place. IC motor control system. Count every step the motor is moved. So the PCM is smart, it has the stepper motor program that learns the appropriate steps for the IAC to maintain the RPM in different scenarios. AC, power steering, factory adjusted set screw. Okay, cool. So before we tear this dock house apart, I want to plot the IAC data on the scanner and see if the van stalls out. If it tries to force the IAC open all the way and it can't, uh, like what's the command? I assume, I mean, if it was a circuit problem, it would set a code for sure. Uh, so this might be a mechanically stuck stepper motor, perhaps. Um, it's been hot soaking here for 10 minutes, so let's fire up the scanner, try to start it, see if it acts up for us. For some reason in this data list I cannot find anything that has to do with the idle air control motor or steps at all. Huh. So I got engine RPM, air intake temperature, map vacuum, minimum TPS. Run time at stall. This is all speed control, so cruise control stuff, spark advance, target governor pressure. I don't know what that is. There's no IAC. Let's see if it acts up. Runs absolutely perfectly. We can try the snap on, see if that has the IAC counts. Hmm, interesting. Got the cover off the engine here. And our idle air control motor is conveniently located right there, four wires. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't look factory to me. It looks a little too clean. It has some numbers engraved on it. Um, not sure about that. But with the snap on Varus, check this out. We have target IAC and IAC steps. Do not have that on the Think Tool Pros. It just proves that there's no perfect scanner on these older domestic cars. It's hard to beat the snap on. That's the, you know, it had 95% of the other data, 
but this is what we really need for our diagnosis. And there's no way you're going to get that from, you know, from your scope. You actually want the computer to tell you what, you know, what it wants and what is actually happening here. So let's graph those. IEC steps and target IEC. What happens when we just cycle the key? Let's try start it up. Okay, about 90. Okay. So we're at 87 there, ready to start. Lose communication. We're at 80, we turn on some loads, headlights, fan, air conditioning for 91. Okay, interesting. So right now, the truck's starting fine. Functional tests. Minimum airflow RPM. ATM, AIS. What is AIS? Okay, IAC is AIS motor. Let's try that. And we just want the IAC target and steps. We click on. You hear it. It seems to be doing what it should. You can even unbolt it from the throttle body and see if it's moving freely. Tap on it. Okay. Exit, leave actual test ring, click resume. Ah, let's get out of here. It kind of cranks really weakly. Cancel, exit.
110 steps now. What is that screeching sound? Wow, if your headlights are on. <laughs> Definitely won't forget to turn those off. See, the target IEC now is higher to maintain the RPM. Before it was like 80, now it's 111. That's kind of strange. Why would that happen? So I don't like how the IAC had to go up like 30, almost 30 steps to maintain the same idle. That doesn't make any sense to me. Let's shut it down. See, back to 87 now. Key on. We're starting at 87. Let's see what it does. Stalls out. Now I'm going to put my foot on the gas a little bit, help it out. Look at that. IAC is at 40, 20, 30, 87. That is very strange. Why would the computer be commanding the IAC down so far? Let's try again. Keep my foot on the gas a little bit. Fifty-six steps. It's gonna stall, it's gonna stall. Okay, now it's happy, back to 87. Run the gas. Oh, almost stalled out. You see that? Ooh. Okay, very, very interesting. So the computer is commanding the IEC, and why is it commanding it so low? When, you, when you're when you on the gas, actually, you should actually open it up more to prepare for a decel event. This is, this is nuts. This kind of blows my mind. Let's uh, try again. We're at 70. Step on the gas. I don't like that it's dropping the IAC so low and when I let go of the gas, it's gonna stall out. That's not correct at all. Let's see, raise our PMs a little bit. Off the gas. Ooh, stalls out. So that's our issue. Definitely have to, has to do with the logic of the idle air control motor. Why is it doing this? That's the question of the day.
That kind of blows my mind. Why would it be commanding the IEC down to 27 steps when you're on the gas a little bit, so you can see the TPS, and then when you let off the gas, it, it stalled out because the IEC was not open far enough. Is there a relearn? Is there some kind of reset? You can look on the scanner, but here the Varus really shines in terms of graphing and having the right data PIDs. Without this scanner, you'd be completely dead in the water. I am 100% honest. You can get your scope out, you can you know, hook them up to the IAC. You won't have any idea what the computer is commanding this thing. Think Tool Pros, you wouldn't have any idea. We need this factory OEM computer live data to do this diagnosis. So just keep that in mind.